Here we go. Hi. Hi everyone, I'm Sharon Clarkson. I'm the person who drives GovCMS, the Assistant Secretary for Online Services at Finance. If you don't know me already, yes, I have an accent. If you can't understand New Zealand, let me know. So often when I talk at Drupal South, or when I talk, come to talk at um, Drupal ACT, which I actually haven't been here since before the pandemic, um, it's usually to flag a direction that GovCMS is going. And I do that to make sure that developers, designers, and private people in private practice, companies, um, other public servants um, clearly know what direction we're heading and, and what we want from the market and what we want from Drupal. Um, and this is another one of those occasions. So today I'm going to be talking about using a design system with GovCMS and just running through what our thoughts are on that and what we would like to see happen. As with everything we do in GovCMS, we lead by example and we lead for influence. Um, we don't work with m mandates and we don't make people do things. We try and influence good practice. So last year at Drupal South, I flagged a number of places that we're going out of the blocks, like a big explosion, really. Um, we were pretty constrained during COVID. We couldn't do too much new stuff. Um, but now we're off like a rocket. Um, we'll be putting in uh, digital experience platform tools, a range of different types. Um, that procurement is still underway, so I can't talk about that any further. We wanted to see more consistency in design and we want to address the structural gaps in government and some of those will really become exposed when agencies start to use DXP. And so we've, we're hatching a bit of a plan to do something about some of those gaps. Our principles have not changed. Create content once and publish everywhere. Create functionality once and share it with everybody. These were our foundation principles. And we're probably adding a third one now create design artifacts once and share back to a community. All, you know, what I think is good common sense. The Australian government design system was started by the DTA. We were always right from the start, um, very enthusiastic supporters. And that was quite a tiny team in, in DTA. And it didn't take long before we saw an opportunity to start sprinting with the DTA and we, called in Health and Services Australia and for nearly six months we all worked together building out the Australian Government Design System to make it more comprehensive. And we were committed to using it ourselves on our sites and we encouraged adoption um, within the agencies using GovCMS. So it was with some sadness that we viewed the AGDS being retired or becoming end of life. And those of you who'd been keeping up with that would have known that it was put out on GitHub as an open source piece of work for anybody else to pick up. Um, come forward two years, uh, we have a little clause in our contract with our service provider um, who provides hosting, and that's a open source give back clause. So we require people who partner, partner with us to commit to, tell me if I'm wrong, Alfred, but I think it's commit to 30 hours of give back into open source a year as a minimum. And um, Alfred knew that I was quite a little bit disappointed about the design system. I thought it was something government really needed to have. It made sense for our users. It was a good thing to do. Lo and behold, he suddenly unveils that he's spent 6,000 hours of development in two years, building it out from way beyond where it was when it was in government and fully mapping every single element back to WCAG 2.1, including, I think, in some of the pages I've seen, instructions on how to implement it properly so you don't break accessibility. Um, it's not enough to just put something in, you've got to know how to put it in. And that's, that's a very large piece of work. Three things that are really important to us, that it's fully open source. And I think it's good that it's now going to be in a much wider, bigger open source community and I'm already talking to my uh, colleagues and, um, and people I, in my network who are in other governments all around the world and in Australia, um, and seeing if we can grow this to be an even bigger thing with a lot more government um, participation. Is technology agnostic? Why is that really important? Well, government often wants to deliver things to kiosks, and it wants to have apps, it wants to have websites, it has transaction systems, um, 
we don't need to have two design systems or three or four or five. We can have one design system and, and that can be managed and deployed out to all of those different kinds of things. The fact this is technology agnostic um, is a really big win. And of course it's WCAG 2.1 compliant, really important for government. We've got to lift our game and get better at delivering more accessible um, access to people for government information and services. So at the moment, there's a Drupal 9 theme. I can, he'll see, he's going to correct me if I get this wrong. There's, there's, um, there's a pattern library, Figma. That's correct, isn't it? And then there's Storybook. Yep. Um, and I've grabbed the wrong one. <laughs> um, so at the moment, there's a, a Drupal theme that for G9 that's been built off. There's also a GovCMS theme. Um, yep, that's available. And we're also looking to do view and react front ends for it as well. So they're truly taking it out into you know headless systems. So this is this is exciting. Um, but Akil can answer. He's going to help me answer questions on the detail <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> so what are we doing in GovCMS? Well, I'm encouraging people um, who use GovCMS customers agencies um, to use it as the base for any new builds and rebuilds as much as I can influence. Um, I'm encouraging everybody to contribute back with enthusiasm. Um, and so in GovCMS, we will be very enthusiastic so that we get other people to be enthusiastic. Um, we want to see people spending their dollars on user research, you know, journey management, new design artifacts, and sharing these things back um, to expand the design system. We don't want to see everybody spending their money building the same types of things over and over again. Very much like the concept when we started GovCMS, 350 different content management systems in government just in this town. No opportunity to collaborate. Everyone only ever got to MVP one or two. They never got any further because we've all got limited amounts of money. Same thing again. If we can pull our resources and we can get so much further, and I think with the with DXP coming, um, we're going to find that agencies are going to realise that they have a lot of work to do around um, audience audience segmentation, about journey mapping and and planning, um, and they may not have that work done and that's really where the, where their investment needs to go. Um, so this is what I say when people ask me to, uh, to explain a design system. Now I know this isn't scientific and it won't end up in a book, but a quality design system allows a wide diversity of online experiences to be created and tailored for specific audiences. It does not mean all websites are the same. So I think a good quality design system can spin up a, you know, a really engaging site for a youth market and it can deliver the defence white paper, which is usually, um, for, because of the type of site, it is very plainly packaged and branded. Um, it does mean as a user, and I think this is what's really, we, when I was at the DTO and we did the user research, the initial user research that's often quoted, and what we found was there wasn't so much a problem with people going from website to website across government because they often had to crisscross Commonwealth and state anyway and local. It was more that understanding where things were in the real estate of a page, understanding uh, what things were called. And I think in just one look I had, I found 35 different examples of what the words we use on buttons that mean submit or go or next. We just use an enormous array of language. There's no consistency. People don't often know how government sites are going to behave because um, of the ontology issues, the real estate issues, the lack of patterns. That matters much more than, whenever, than having everybody had the same blue banner and crest, although I know the crest is important. Um, so for me, it's about consistency, where things are, what they're called and how they behave. That's what gives us usability. And I think if, you know, I'm going to use Microsoft here, but it doesn't matter which Microsoft product I pick up, I know where I'm going to be able to save my work. I know that it's going to be in the same menu, in the same place. There's going to be a drop down. It's going to say save and it's going to have save as. So I've been trained to know how Microsoft products work. And that is a design system because it's across all of their products. 
and this is what we mean around consistency. Um, so yes, for developers, I know there's a lot of you here tonight, there are already 60 Drupal theme ready components. Um, it's flexible enough to extend and customize um, for the more sophisticated work that you do, should reduce some of the testing load if you're focusing only on Delta features. And maybe that will give you more time to get further down a customer's backlog and delight them. <laughs> you know, un unexpectedly delight them, there's opportunities. And for designers, I don't think your work's going to drop off. I think the, the, the design we need in government right now is slightly different and it's going to change quite remarkably when DXP comes to the fore. So I want to see more time improving UX and service design, um, understanding the audience, mapping journeys, faster design of customer components and better accessibility compliance. And I hope the design system will help you do all of that better. I certainly don't see government agencies um, no longer needing design services because we've got a design system. Um, and for agencies, faster builds, lower build costs, four sites that are able to use starter themes and pre-existing components. How many of our sites would just go that far? I don't know the percentage, but it's pretty low. Okay, so it doesn't mean everybody's just going to pick up our starter site and they're never going to contact the rest of you again. Um, that's a particular subset of GovCMS sites. Um, usually there's much more of a desire to um, engage and, and to change something in the community and those sites um, and they want to do things that will engage the user. Design consistency for their brand artifacts across all the things that they own, transaction systems. Eventually, I hope this kind of thinking will go whole of government. So we're not just thinking about it in our own agency space, but we're thinking about it in a cross government capacity. And of course, DXP coming into GovCMS um, will kickstart a lot of those conversations. Um, and overhead maintenance um, reduced a little. So if you want to find out more about the Civic theme, that's the homepage. And they have a roadmap that's published uh, so you can see where the plan is to go. Um, the more of us that engage with this design system, um, you know, noting that's open source product, um, the better off we all are. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people would lock this up as some sort of commercial product, really. There's, there's an enormous investment in hours here. Um, and we commit also in GovCMS to um, driving adoption within our community and encouraging um, give back into that community as well. We need to have a central, you know, something to work to. Um, and we have to pick something as GovCMS. So we'll pick open source over, over other things as usual. <laughs> yep. So that's my talk. <laughs> Any questions for Sharon? So uh, the Civic theme is built on the components module, right? For the Drupal implementation. Maybe my a better question is, what technology inside of Drupal is the Civic theme built upon? And I'm guessing it's not built on the single directory components. Can you, like, are you going to use that in the future or are we sticking with whatever way you've got right now? I'm just going to phone a friend because I've got Alex. <laughs> Don't ask me that. Please. Alex is online. Alex right? is online. Yeah. <coughs> so Alex Skripnik, who uh, is the solution architect for Civic Theme, is online. So I'm just trying to see if he's still listening and going to answer me that, that question. So in the meantime, hopefully... Uh, he's, he's answering in the chat. Yeah, yeah okay. I didn't think... I, cool. SVC will be used in the future. Any time... <laughs> Like, do we have a time? Like, is, is there part of the roadmap? Like, I just had a check and it's not on the roadmap at all, but, like, are you looking for people to help you migrate things or...? In, in terms of moving it away from, like, Drupal or...? No, why, uh, what's the so motivation? in 10.1, Drupal uh, introduced single directory components right. as a core module. Um, it looks like the way that Drupal wants to start handling right, right, components right. in general. Um, so I'm guessing... Oh, I'm asking... Are we going to move 
if if we use civic theme, do I have to know something else, or should I be just using quadruple? Just waiting to see what Alex says. And if so, do you want help, like migrating those things to SDC? Uh, well, I mean, for help, we'd be happy to help and get contribution and put towards the, co uh, the product. That'd be great. Do you have an answer? Oh, it's going to grab the mic. Yep. I think I know yeah, the answers. Like I've, I, no, it's good. Yeah. Good questions. Sorry, Alex. Is, uh, perfect. Yeah. yeah, no, I'm, yeah. Yep. When we use it for GovC methods in an experimental branch. But yes. Mm. Yeah. So Alex's answer is it will be put on the roadmap document soon. Okay. SDCs were not available two years ago. No. We will be providing migration paths. Okay, that's cool. And you say, of course, they'd love some help. Yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Anyone wants help, right? Hey, get an open spread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That would be interesting, actually. Anyone? Any more you questions? Um, nothing. That's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Any other questions? Yes. Um, do we know the adoption rate of Civic Theme? Um, because when I talk to agencies, it's still not quite widely known. And I think if it's going to get support across government, um, it needs sort of broader adoption. So I'm just wondering, do we know the sort of metrics around how this has been picked up? Yeah, there's definitely some sites already being built on it. Um, now that we have people coming for new builds, um, coming to the platform, we tell them all about it, we've pointed out where it is, we suggest that when they go out to market, they ask for um, someone to implement them a site using the theme as at least a starting point. It doesn't mean, I mean, the theme's only, you know, two years post coming out of, into re the AG, AGDS retirement. Um, there's so much more that could be built for it, right? So I'm hoping that if new sites coming to GovCMS uh, go to it as a matter of course, then more and more components are going to get, um, you know, given back um, to the to the design system. So yes, in GovCMS we're talking about it. Remember, we don't have a marketing budget. We have very few opportunities to go in, out and talk, apart from our mega meets, and occasionally here. Um, but we do a lot more talking that you don't see behind the scenes. We're talking to people all the time. Um, so new sites. Sites that we know are going through can, uh, you know, reasonable size rebuild or refresh. That's a time that we'd inject ourselves and say, hey, what about this? Talked about it at Drupal South. We've started to talk about it at some of our internal GovCMS events and we'll be talking about it again at the Mega Meet. But I think really we're at the start of really pushing it hard and starting to have those kind of conversations. Also, I've been doing a lot of work across government at SES level to say, look at this, <laughs> look at this, don't go building one. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think it's going to be awesome if it gets adopted. Like, um, the design systems have been talked really a about a lot these days, so it'd be good to have a consistent one that we can all use. I was just going to say, from my point of view, obviously we're trying to tell everyone <laughs> about it um, and, and you know, get the word of, uh, word of mouth out there. Uh, as much as we can, and obviously with um, you know groups like GovCMS especially, are able to get that word out there more for us. They have a much wider reach than we do, obviously. So um, yeah, the, the more we can get it out there, the more adoption. Obviously, then there's benefits for that. So yes, as much as we're doing, it'd be great if others. Now the other thing is tricky that we've just we're talking about earlier tonight is that we can't tell who's actually using it. So it's open source. People are using it. They're modifying it, do what they need to, but we can't actually necessarily tell and it's been attributed. So we're wanting to kind of see how we can register or track that. It'd be fantastic to kind of see the adoption rate specifically. We have that issue with the GovCMS distro. It's widely used around the world. It's used by a lot of other governments. I can't even remember how many governments, but we've, we've, we keep tripping over it, don't we? Central Africa, uh, Bahamas, I think, yeah. City of London, some things in London. Um, we, it pops up everywhere. Um, it <laughs> pops up in provincial governments and local governments around the world. And again, we don't know who's using it. We'll suddenly find out by accident and think, oh, that's pretty cool. Um, but I think, you know, we've got to remember this has not been built for GovCMS and the Australian Commonwealth and state governments, you know, the, the, and our local governments that are sit on GovCMS. This is a design system. 
and more and more businesses need to have fully compliant, accessible, um, you know, sites um, because that makes good business sense, right? And more and more they're being held to the same standards, particularly larger businesses. So this is the design system for a range of different universities, big business, small business, government, you know, non-profits, everyone can use this. That there's a theme that's being built for GovCMS is just one more way of extending that design system. So if we're all contributing to the core design system, we can build something strong and vibrant and um, something that helps us all do our jobs. I'm just, Kill, just, to, just to add to the end of that, yes. um, we've probably got about half a dozen sites at the most on the platform, on the GovCMS platform using Civic Theme. I know of about a dozen, close to 20, who are looking at adopting it. And I get even more questions than that about, you know, can we use it? Who's starting? So it feels like the noise is starting, but a lot of that is happening on our service desk where, of course, it's not visible like a conversation like this. Yeah, so, I don't know if I have to ask because I've just put this as a mobility or like a driving area around what the theme is and even from the AG, yes, we've got one done. I think that's, that's certainly yeah. helped, yeah. yeah. For the, yeah, for those of you not familiar with Australian government architecture, they are talking about it in there. So, and they're also talking about us in their GovCMS. Um, so there's some more visibility there. But yeah, it's, yeah. it's certainly doable on our platform, and people are very interested. Yeah, so Alice is referring to the new DTA website, the AGA, the Australian Government Architecture site, and Civic Themes on there with GovCMS. Yeah, and I think it's understanding, like in the government context, um, you know, what kind of role you play in educating whoever comes forward and seeks. Um, build services or design service for websites because you probably, those of you working in the private sector probably think that largely there's a digital team that's in charge of the government websites and that agency, and yes there is, but that's not how a lot of sites are created, and a lot of sites will happen in a big project, and it's the project manager for the big project of which the website is one component, or an app is a component, um, that will kick off um, with project staff who may or may not be public servants, who may be largely a contractor staff, um, who will not have been part of the conversations that we have with the digital teams in their agency, who may not be talking to the digital team in their agency, um, and who have no idea about GovCMS in many cases, or have no idea about uh, the design system. The second way these things start is in a business group that's not part of the digital um, part of the agency and sometimes sometimes we have had experiences where we're dealing with I'll give you one case study we were dealing with a particular agency I shall not name and we had seven different websites different projects on GovCMS all quite different and then we realized they were all being run from seven different teams and the seven different teams had never met each other <laughs> so we organized the meeting we invited all seven teams and we introduced them to each other um, we do that a lot, okay? So you do have a role to educate. You do have a role to say, hey, did you know all your colleagues across government are doing this? Um, and if you're not sure, ask GovCMS. They'll tell you what they think of it. You know, um, we really do rely on developers and designers to let people know what good practice is. We can't guarantee they're going to come through the, the teams that we are engaging with regularly. I think we've got time for one more question, if anyone's got one. Uh, yeah, so I think, I think you got, you answered most of the question I, I'm trying to ask, I think. Um, we do actually have, we spent a, um, one month uh, for a resource to actually try to, you know, use um, co uh, Civic Theme. Um, so we actually have some feedback, but probably not a good idea to put it here. So um, when you see actually, you know, the open design system, it was, um, remember the time when the open design system published within the DTA, that was big wave, that was big push. Uh, everyone tried to adopt the design system. They do actually have public website, have the documentation, uh, everyone can uh, jump in to have a look at what, how we're going to implement the different component based on that. So I didn't actually see anything happen for uh, civic theme. 
So wondering, are you going to um, integrate or cope with some other agencies such as DTA to promote uh, this design system? I think that's my question. <laughs> I don't know if I can answer that. <laughs> I couldn't quite hear back uh, here. I got deaf can, during COVID. <laughs> so. can, can agencies, or can we encourage agencies like DTA to talk about and, and encourage use of a civic theme? Uh, we can't obviously right. do that on behalf I've of government. I've already done that. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> if you go to the Australian Government, government Architecture. Architecture site run by the DTA, uh, you'll see that GovCMS is now their preferred, preferred provider of content management services for government, but it is not mandated. Okay, we heard that off. Um, but also they list there, um, they actually have a, a list for the civic theme. And, they're, and they're, they are, um, they've seen it, they've had a good look at it, and they're recommending it too now. So it's not just me. Yeah. And just while that's happening, to answer your question about feedback, we do actually have a Slack channel, Alex has mentioned here, which is uh, Civic, Theme dosh uh, Civic Theme Dash Design System on the Drupal Slack channel. So if you need questions, conversation, it's all there. Yeah, so look, if there's any critical feedback, naturally we'd love to hear. But there's one thing else, and I just hope I've understood your question right, but one other important thing to, to call out is, um, so obviously the, the former Australian government design system has been decommissioned. We all know that that's public knowledge now. Um, um, we have um, a special document. So if you go to civictheme.io front slash AUDS for Australian, uh, AU for Australian design system, there is a, I don't know if it's a 50 or 100 or a 200 page document that shows the lineage to all the original DTA uh, design system components and all the rationale for those that we adopted versus those that we had uh, uh, tweaked and the rationale with supporting evidence for why the adjustments that were made so it shows the, the lineage at a component at a, you know based on atomic design principles etc so it's probably worth also understanding it's just a good piece of uh, document that shows the the lineage and the rationale for any adaptions adoptions and new uh, components that we've introduced yeah, I really encourage you all, if you haven't seen it, to go and have a look and have a good tour around the site and see what's been being offered. And it's free. <laughs> I'm just going to mention, I think uh, Alex has also mentioned, if you have any issues, please raise it on drupal.org. Yeah. 